civilizations risen and die along Tigris and Euphrates of Iraq. Archaeological feature and ancient relics from Babylonian, Assyrian, Sumerian all show them a huge variety of wildlife in Iraq, starting from the south up to the Kurdistan. The Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian, how many civilizations that we got in Iraq, all worship, respect, and love their wildlife, but actually they put it as their symbol of greatness and glory. One of them was the Mesopotamian lion, the, the iconic feature of the Babylonian kingdom, which gave a message to all over the world that we are powerful and in the full glory. My love and much passion to the wildlife in Iraq took me outside those doors, outside the walls, to climb in the mountain of Kurdistan, or going to the barren desert of Western Iraq in Ambar, or seeking between the reed beds in the lower Mesopotamia marshes. So I am here, hating, hating to dress the suits, just to tell you a story from the three different parts of Iraq. The first step was in the southern Mesopotamia marshes, the second disaster, environmental disaster has Iraq faced. My passion to the wildlife there, seek me to take a chance to see this guy, it's called Azam Alwash, he is running an environmental agency called Nature Iraq. In order to help the lower Mesopotamia marshes, this uh, satellite image shows that the, the, the devastation that the southern Iraqi marshes made in 18s by the ex-Iraqi regime. The dark green is the Iraqi marshes in 18s, but it changed to a small part in the eastern borders of Iraq with Iran made by ex-Iraqi regime. So I remember Azam's work very well. We stood in Chibaish, beating part of the southern marshes, and there's nothing. There's an empty desert. The scene is was enough to give you up with all attempts to restore this place. And he told, told me, Ahmad, we have a lot of work to do. So I started to go, take my cameras, and take my experience in the wildlife ecology and biology, looking for the wildlife there, starting from the birds, wild mammals, insects, amphibians, reptiles, they all need attention and love. So I started to photograph them, recording the habitation of the wildlife and the ecosystem of the southern Iraqi marshes, and recorded many, many amazing things that may, many, many of you are not aware about them. First of all was the Basra reed warbler, the endemic species of Iraq, was recorded again, the breeding in the southern Iraqi marshes. So, after the wildlife, people come. And now the southern Iraqi marshes has now become a protected area and to become designated as the uh, one national heritage site of Iran. Kurdistan is a different story. Kurdistan, it was declared by Iraqi ex-Iraqi regime about 80% from the Iraqi military exercise done in Kurdistan. So it's another word that we are going to do birding <coughs> and wildlife photography in the middle of Buffalo Field. We don't have any data about minefields. I am now just giving you your soul in a different or in harsh habitat, in the harsh landscape. You can't predict what you are face on. I remember my story with my colleague, he's a Kurdish guy, he's a very talented person, he's called Koresh. He's climbing the mountain of Pejmi along to Mount, Mount, Mount in Suleymaniye. We, we are seeking to photograph one of the raptors. It's endemic to Kurdistan, and it's very powerful species called the long leg buzzard. So we are running, running about climbing the mountain to get the nest, and we found yeah, we are in the middle of the minefield. So I remember him very well. We are stepping, and we getting, and the hour step, returning back to the same point. The end of the tragedy, that I saw, I, I went to college and we uh, gave a big smile because we photographed this pair for the first time in Iraq from Kurdistan. We created an IBA, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an important birds area in Kurdistan, and we created a key KBA, it's a key biodiversity area from Kurdistan, and we went a different kind in Kurdistan, remote areas, little of people, uh, a very, very uh, uh, friendly local Kurdish people will help up to get in the most hot, hot spot for wildlife. Another story, which is the most recent one and very difficult one, is to photographing the wildlife in the western desert of Iraq in Ambar. 
Yes, they are the beautiful scene of landscape with the spring of flowers, with the camel roaming in the, de the desert, but it's also it's a place for IDs, snipers, insurgents. So it was a thin line between braveness and stupidity. So we take our chance and went there to photograph the wildlife there. The big cooperation program between Iraqi Minister of Environment, Nature Iraq, Royal Society of Protection of Birds, and other international NGOs seeking for this small bird is a critically endangered species. It breeds in Kazakhstan and return over Kurdistan and North, <coughs> Northern Iraq to sit in Western Iraq. So I need to take hungies, three hungies with 15 powerful people to go to photograph this bird. So the birding in Western Iraq is different than the birding in, in, in New York City or in Canada. Uh, the beauty of the nature is always admirable. You, can, you cannot describe what you will find in the field. Amazing uh, species from reptiles, amphibians, mammals living in Iraq. Um, but the most important thing that is still um, need and conservation and attention. For Kurdistan, there were four iconic species that I am uh, working with them right now. And nature are giving more of their time to conserve those species. The Kurdistan knew it. And it's only species of amphibian found in Kurdistan. The wild goat in Barzan area, which is a huge population living now in Nergesur and Barzan area. And this photograph, I was climbing two hours to get the uh, hot spot of the uh, uh, wild goat. And the small young one, it's a very uh, good attempt to, for a uh, population recovery in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. The Egyptian vulture, which is also exists and the only in northern Iraq to breed in many sites there. And the last one is the iconic Persian leopard, which my colleague Hannah Ahmed is doing a program for conservation of species in eastern border with Iran. We need to respect and we need to appreciate the life. But unfortunately, most of Iraqis, they do not, they do, not do that. My, my work now is just to take the attention from all Iraqi people to respect their wildlife like our grandfather about 5,000 years ago. I will fight those people till I death. No hunters. Environmental legislation should be uh, strongly uh, applied in the field. There should be respect and love to the wildlife in Iraq because the Iraqi people say, or the wildlife in Iraq face, face the same fate like wildlife. We, if you are uh, willing to help the environment, and if you are willing to help the wildlife in Iraq, please serve at Nature Iraq and see what the environmental program that we do because it's mostly appreciated. And the last thing I, I'd like to do, I've been working in the southern Iraqi marshes. I've been sitting for four hours in small reed houses called Morif. And it's called Noja. It's, it's built in the, in the, in the uh, shallow marshes. I've worked with Arab Shia. So I returned back to the desert. they all Arab Sunnah. I live in tent. But then I come to Kurdistan. I work with Kurd. All for all those people, they were sharing the same generous and hospitality. So now I can't, I didn't see no difference between those spots and two <laughs>